kids. We are here for chapter 13 now. Did you guys enjoy the difference between the beginning of the story and that chapter 12, at the end of chapter 12, evolution and change and big growth in, within Danny? I did, and you guys had an amazing job and had amazing answers for that. So let's give us all a big giant high five. Good work. Yes, um, I loved your answers. Yes, Danny did change. He evolved. He grew. At the beginning of the, the novel, he was um, kind of a boy who got into trouble here and there. He still was in the same mindset of New York City, wanting to go and adventure out, just be with his friends, be on his own, because he was just so used to it, right? But now, he is a young man who has gone through so much, who has witnessed things that are go, that will go down in history for his time there in his life in 1941 and on into our lives today. We know about um, the event that happened that he lived through. So that was an amazing thing that helped him change into a boy who wouldn't leave his ma anymore as in the beginning of the novel. He just wanted to take off back to where he's from. He wanted to save Ma, save others, help others, and he's just completely changed now. And that was a beautiful thing to experience, to witness him grow through, and to be able to recognize as a reader, hey, he's changing. And what I love most about that is being aware of it in a character in our story helps us be able to understand those kind of changes within ourselves especially at this time in second grade going to third we are growing up a little bit and you can probably even relate to Danny yourself think of how you were at the beginning of the year until now that we're coming to the end right some amazing growths and evolutions within yourselves too good job now at the end Let's get on to chapter 13. At the end of chapter 12, he did realize that he's not he, not that kind of boy anymore, right? So now let's see what else is going to happen in 13. Maybe he's going to realize some more things. Or who knows? Let's get into the reading. But before we do that, let's take a pause and go over our questions. That way we can be ready to have the answers and looking for them and, and um, watching out for them while we read. First question for... Chapter 13. What happened to Mr. Pseudo? Oh, a new character. We know about Aki and Mrs. Pseudo. Now we're going to find out who is Mr. Pseudo. Next question. How did Danny help the Pseudo family? He's going to be helping more people, people he knows. Next question. Why did Danny decide to believe in Earl? Remember, Earl is Earl Gasky, the gang leader back in New York City. Why did he decide to believe him? I wonder what we're talking about here. And last question, how did Danny's friendship with Earl help him during the attack on Pearl Harbor and afterwards? Hmm. So Danny's friendship with this gang leader, Earl Gasky, is going to help him during that attack in Pearl Harbor? And somehow afterwards so let's think about that while we're listening to, to chapter 13 you ready I am okay chapter 13 December 9 1941 9 a.m. it was two long days before Ma and Danny left Hickam the first thing Danny did was change his clothes. The next thing he did was spring up to the pseudo's house. Aki ran to him. Danny had brought him a present. One of the airmen had given Danny his wings. Not real wings. When a pilot gives you his wings, he gives you a pin. Um, if you've ever been on an airplane ride, most pilots give um, younger kids uh, their wings. It's a little pin that goes on you. Um, just for being a good sport and enjoying the flight, especially if it's your first one. Danny had brought him a present. One of the airmen had given Danny his wings. Danny clipped the gold pin onto Aki's shirt. Mama! Aki shrieked, look! Mrs. Sudo stepped away from her clothesline. The clothesline is where you hang the clothes. Instead of a dryer, there can, you can also put it on a clothesline. Um, in Spanish, it's called a lasso. So yeah, she was hanging up her, her laundry and a clothesline at the time, so she stepped away. 
She smiled at Danny and hugged him. But Danny noticed her red and swollen eyes. A feeling of dread came over Danny. He saw no sign of Mr. Sudo. Mrs. Sudo had Danny sit down at the little table where they'd had lunch just a few days ago. She sent Aki into the house to get his toy trains. And she told Danny what had happened. Somehow, Mr. Sudo had made it home from fishing the night after the attack. But the next day, the police had come to the house. They were searching the houses of all Japanese people in Hawaii. Mrs. Sudo looked down. They are looking for spies. Spies? Danny asked. They said that local Japanese here had helped with the attack. Stop real quick. That means the army is thinking that Japanese people, just any Japanese people, anybody who is Japanese in their in their origin, they don't have to have lived there. If they are Japanese people, they must be spies. They're not asking, they're not really even searching the right way. They're just assuming if you're Japanese, you are a spy, which isn't always the case, right? It's never right to just judge somebody from their race or what they look like. But that's what happened here. Mrs. Sudo looked down. They are looking for spies. Spies? Danny asked. They said that local Japanese here had helped with the attack. They asked if they could search our home. And of course we said yes, because there is nothing here we have to hide. Mrs. Sudo pushed her lips together and took a ragged breath. But they did find something. Something they said proved that Aki's father was helping the Japanese. The sketchbook with all of his drawings of ships and planes. They took it and then they took my husband to jail. And he tried to understand what Mrs. Sudo was saying. What's wrong with drawing the ships and planes? Danny said. They said he had given information to the Japanese about what ships were in the harbor and what kind of planes we had. They said he helped them plan the attack. But didn't you tell them that's not true? Danny asked. Of course we did, Danny. My husband has lived in Hawaii his whole life. He loves America. This attack enraged him. That night he came home from fishing. He said he wanted to join the Navy, the U.S. Navy, and fight the people who did this to our beautiful Hawaii. Did you tell them that? Of course, Mrs. Sudo said, but they didn't listen. I heard they have arrested other Japanese people. There is a rumor that they are going to put all Japanese people in America in jail. Danny couldn't believe that was true. Mrs. Mills always said America was the land of the free. Just then, Aki came running out with his toy train. Danny, play, he said. Mrs. Sudo, Danny, patted Danny's hand and got up to finish the laundry. Probably the best thing he could do for Mrs. Sudo was to keep Aki busy. And so he brought Aki back to his house and they spent the afternoon playing. All that afternoon, Danny thought about Mr. Sudo. Was there any way he could help? Nothing came to him until later that night when he was laying in bed. Danny realized that there was one person who might be able to do something. And the next morning, he went to the post office and sent a telegram to Earl Gasky. There was no way of knowing whether Earl had anything to do with Mr. Sudo's release from jail a week later. So Mr. Sudo got released from jail a week later. And who knows, maybe it was because of Earl Gasky. But Danny knew that Mr. Sudo was back because he heard a shriek from the hill, Papa! An hour later, Aki had dragged Mr. Sudo down to meet Danny. 
Of course, Danny didn't mention to Mr. Sudo that he'd asked a gangster to help free him from prison. Who knew if the telegram had ever even reached Earl? And if it had, who knew if Earl had even cared? But right now, there wasn't much Danny could believe in. So, he decided to believe in Earl. That's the end of chapter 13. I hope you got some answers ready. Remember, we write in complete sentences starting with capital letters, ending with punctuation, either period, question mark, or exclamation point, and we show proof from the chapter. How did we get our answer? What told us in chapter 13? Good luck.